It's Feedback Gaming. Welcome back for another multiplayer mid-maxing meta tutorial guide. This guide is created by the great Tommy K Live. Twitch.tv forward slash Tommy K Live. He plays a lot of multiplayer meta, and this is his most tested and most proven to be effective multiplayer meta guide. I gonna say it hand on heart right now. This is the best meta multiplayer min-maxing guide I have ever met. I have rehearsed this like six or seven times. I have written three pages of notes of what to do in the build orders. I think I've got this down to a T. But with all multiplayer guides, every time you play it, there will be variations of new tactics that you must employ to try and counter the enemy's build. So yes, this is perfect for now, but as things change and the meta evolves, then more than likely you will find that this build will change as well. All right. First of all, if you enjoy min maxing videos, it's important that we get a like and a comment on this video. I put a lot of work in this video, and a simple thank you would be to smack that like button and drop a comment. Just roll your face on the keyboard, and that will do. Is that okay? Brilliant. All right, let's just talk about the first setup. I always think this bit's the trickiest, because if you get this wrong, the whole guide goes to cock. All right, we're going to select all of our divisions. Hold shift, click on undersigned divisions. Hold shift again, left click the division we want to get rid of, and that is a single motorized division, which is here. And we are going to exercise that one division. The reason we've gone for this division, because this is the largest division, the more battalions of troops you have in this division, the more XP you will grind. We are going to get XP from grinding this division, and we will get XP from the Spanish Civil War, which is coming up very, very shortly. First of all, we're going to start by building some factories. Uh, in the most highest infrastructure areas of Japan, therefore to build them the quickest and most efficiently. And we're also going to make a few small adjustments to the infrastructure around about this area of uh, Manchu. In this case, we're going to max out the port of Dalain, Dalini, Dalani, Dalun, do, 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 that one. And we're also going to add one infrastructure here, and we are going to also add three airport levels here too. Okay, now <clears throat> we are going to do our... Navy. Now this is probably where people that may get a little bit cringe and a little bit angry because this is not what people think the the guide will be about. And I'll explain more as we go. All right, so we are going to make a hundred convoys. Making more than a hundred convoys is a waste of time. You're just going to be banking a crap ton of convoys and not using them. So I sign a thousand. That means that this, when this thousand convoys is done, this will close and we'll get a notification to assign our naval dockyards to somewhere else. And we are going to continue building our carrier. We are going to select our entire navy. Select one of the navy. Hold shift. Drag all the existing ones as one in the Pacific and press G to merge them. They will all merge now. We're going to go for our first of all our research. I'm going to refer to my notes for this. If you want to see my full notes breakdown and you are a $5 Patreon or a $5 Twitch subscriber, you can access my feedback chat on my Discord and the notes will all be available to you there so you can reference them if need be. Okay, so first of all, you work on construction. Then you're going to go for machine tools. Then you are going to go for electronic engineering and then you're going to work on your doctrine which is superior firepower really quickly to boost your economy construction is essential for machine tools so you can get concentrated industry so therefore you can produce more equipment which is useful as the game progresses uh, you've got electronic mechanical engineering because you need radio and you need to boost your uh, research techs and finally your doctrine because you want to start working on it as soon as possible because you are going to be going to war roughly about pretty much just late late next year so about 18 months from now your natural focus the first thing you're going to do is you're going to rush all the way down to spiritual mobilization it's technically not that one you want it's this one national defense state you want because it gets total mobilization as early as possible push it all the way down and you need spiritual mobilization because this takes off 2.5 percent of your recruitable pop oh actually no it takes off three percent and this one adds 2.5 percent back so that way you can balance the books anyway gonna go for purge the ku koada faction koada there you go yeah Right, you are getting some oil from America, so say no to that. You are going to take all your resources from Manchu right now. Uh, so that means all of the steel. You don't need it right now, but we will need it when I've done my production. So take all of it, and you're going to take all the aluminium from them as well. That's right, I said aluminium, not aluminium. That's right, because I'm British, and I'm not American, and I say the words correctly. 
Oh, so triggered in the chat right now. So triggered. Oh, so triggered. Okay, we are going to go for tactical bombers, and we are going to go for close air support. That will change as the game progresses, though. We are going to make some artillery, we are going to make some support, and we are going to make some guns. And that pretty much assigns all my production for now. I think, though, we need to focus a little bit more on close air support in the short term, because doing more damage to air against China is going to be worthwhile, because China... Well, China's going to be making just raw infantry, and anything you can try and do to counter them is going to be worthwhile. Now, there is an alternative version of this build. There is an alternative version of this build where you make self-propelled tanks early on, and you make self-propelled tank divisions. It's doable. It's more effective at defeating Chinese divisions. But one, you're going to run into more supply problems in China, particularly northern China, which the infrastructure is really bad. And two, you have trouble with resources early on, so it can, tends to kind of squeeze your economy early on so that causes a lot of issues as the game progresses now we're done you say right now we're done but technically we're not we have to do what the manchu player and also the siamese player would do in a normal game i know this really sucks i have to do it this way but this is the only way i can do it and represent and recreate a multiplayer guide i never really explained what a, what a mid-maxing video is have i i haven't really talked about it let's talk about it so a min-max multiplayer guide is where I try and recreate a multiplayer game in single player uh, to try and show you the build and the strategy you need to go in a multiplayer game. And the question is, why don't you just play a multiplayer game? Well, the problem with the multiplayer game is there's lots of interruptions, such as rehosts, hobbies, re uh, rejoins, and it could just cause just a whole lot of mess so in this case just to make things a lot of streamlined and easy as possible we're just gonna do it in a single player game it's a question that gets asked quite a lot so i just thought i'd answer it now great all right so that's fine so we're gonna tell manchu to do that and we're gonna build all the infrastructure in the southern province why well first we want the better supply and two increasing the infrastructure gains more steel so that's worthwhile we are gonna go for manchu now and we're gonna tell manchu to build max infrastructure in their southern tile in fact we'll just tell them to add two because I don't want them to add them too much, because I want to be able to build inside of them anyway. And if you max it out, we can't build inside of them, uh, being the, the puppet. And we also need to tell Siam what to do. So, just to get a, kind of like an idea of who are the allies and the enemies in this area. Japan, Manchu, Menchu, as well as Siam, are all kind of like the same faction in this area of the world. Where everyone is pretty much against you. But the good news is the allies are all, well, Raj... Dutch, Malaya, British Malaya, Australia, New Zealand, um, Philippines and USA are all kind of like the allies where you've got China is you're going to fight them early on separately. So all at once would probably be impossible as, as Japan, but one at a time, easy. Okay, there's quite a few things you need to do in Siam. You're going to build the infrastructure max. You're going to max out the airport in the south. You are going to build AA in the north and the south. That's it. All right, moving back to mainland Japan. All right, we're back. We're back. So, that's all that sorted, done and dusted. We have added one extra motorized in the top. We don't need to start making motorized immediately, but as time goes on and we make more factories, we will eventually add them on. In fact, I'll just pop that there for now. Perfect, let's go fire speed and let's actually finally start this freaking game, all right? So all the navy has merged up here. We'll move them over to Shudoku. And we will tell this guy to assign on to them here. Perfect, everything is going swimmingly one thing we haven't done which we will do now is merge all of the air force select all the air force shift left click drag just grab all that air force and pull it over please don't pull the planes off the carrier it'll be it's a nightmare time to reassign them please don't do that everyone's made that mistake as a newbie so don't do that press g to merge them and you can see all your your troops which is perfect yeah everyone's made that mistake at some point they've uh they pulled all their uh, planes off their carrier it is a nightmare to get them off. We're going to split all the subs off. We will divide them up evenly over time. But just for now, for the first phase of the war, we're not going to bother doing that. There are so many, like, what-if scenarios in this build that we need to talk about. We will go through them as the game progresses. But for now, we'll just talk about what we're doing right now. I'm going to pull off six battleships. And move them here. We are going to sign this guy, the fly swat. It gives extra 10% extra naval AA. Uh, ships are very vulnerable to AA from land, so I just need to make them aware of that. That's probably the best choice to try and keep those planes down. So this guy, if you probably haven't on, on the gathered, this is for shore bombardment. 
The idea behind this guy is you are going to bombard the shore and try and do extra damage. That music is so loud. Yep. And then the submarines are to hit the convoys. And then we've got finally the carrier fleet, which we'll assign here as well. Okay, so here we go. I need to talk about a possible strategy that China may go for, depending if it's available in the rules. China may choose to get access um, by the Philippines or France or USA or the UK. And what they'll do is move out their ships to here or, well, basically somewhere that's outside of the border region. And then they'll try and hit your convoys around here, here, and here instead. That's a possible strategy they can go for. That's so easy to spot. All you need to do is select China and just see if they've got access from another country. Most rules disallow it because it's a bit exploitative. But it's just something to be aware of. And in that case, if you do see that, in that case, you're going to have to spread out your fleet a little bit further to try and capture those submarines and destroyers and whatnot from hitting your submarines but it's not a big deal but they might try and do that because they might try and enable invade the mainland japan i know you, it's so weird you have to worry about that but china can mainland um can try and invade the mainland and be a bit of a nuisance all it really does is slow you down it's very unlikely a china will be able to capitulate you just with a few divisions that they land but there's something you have to worry about and the idea is that they have some ships out here hit your convoys you move your all your fleet out to here and then they do a naval invasion here because they've got naval supremacy because you've moved your fleet it's just something to be aware of okay wow there's so many things we need to talk about so many things we need to go over i'm making sure i get everything there we go. First of all, we purge the clan. Then we're going to guide the Zabius. Zabius. Zabius? Am I close enough with that? Tell me in the comments how wrong I am. All right. Okay. We're good. Yep. Production for everything is going swimmingly. I'm really happy with that. We can uh, adjust our fleets as we are doing. That's good. So it's a good idea to assign a few more civvies too. We are getting through them pretty quickly. It's important that these three need to be complete when the war actually does kick off um, versus China. That's just something to be aware of. So you'll adjust things depending on your timings. Okay, so Tommy in his multiplayer games will send 900 guns once to the Nationalist Spain and then one support equipment monthly. This is an old bug that I thought had been fixed but apparently hasn't. So... What would normally happen is you send 900 guns, these would get instantly removed, and then this would keep the lend lease going, so therefore you'll constantly get a trickle of XP. So just always send the support equipment. I feel like sometimes maybe I overly... Does anyone feel like I overly explain things? I feel like sometimes I slow down my little tutorial guides by over explaining. Let me know in the comments if I do or I don't. I'm going to go for mechanical computing to speed up research time. So, every time I've tested this... The Republicans win. Why? Because it just seems to be something to do with the positioning and the, where the factories are positioned and who sends lend lease and who sends volunteers. It must be the Soviet volunteers are just insanely strong. That must be the only explanation. Um, Tommy has said a few times that he does send guns to the Republicans too to try and grind XP if he is struggling with XP. That's just something to be aware of as well. It's not necessarily to boost the opposite side because he wants the Nationalist to win at the end of the game because Nationalist Spain does help out the Axis in this area of the world. He, he just he does that so he can get enough XP to just, well, be a, well, have the divisions that he needs for the war that's coming up. Okay. We are getting the XP we are going to be needing. We're going to use our big division here to add on artillery battalions. We are going to add on four, make it elite, give it a custom icon, skull, why not, our helmets have skulls on them, are we the baddies, concentrate industry, and we're going to progress down the superior firepower, we are, unfortunately, due to some of our bad national spirits, we aren't allowed to go for free trade at 150 pp, we need to wait until 187, and free trade is what we're going to do, because free trade is the matter, because it allows everyone to trade with each other, and, uh, well, do the most damage, I guess, by uh, using the resources to their maximum effectiveness. We need free trade. Yeah, this is usually how it goes. In a multiplayer game, what the Nashus player will do, will try and hold this river line here. 
And the, I don't know why, but the Republican Spain AI will always try and attack over the river until they've run out of manpower or run out of equipment, whatever comes first, or both. And in that case, the Nashus player will counterattack and kill them. The reason why the Nashus player will stall and delay is to uh, to try and grind as much XP for Germany, Italy, and Japan. There you go, and that is the ideal template for battalions. We're going to work on the support as well. I'm going to rush the construction too. It just seems to be the norm that. And we are going to go for the national focus uh, of uh, an extra research, research lot. Nice. Everything is going perfect so far. I'm following his guide. More than likely, there will be variations of this guide that maybe people don't agree with. And more than likely, Tommy will watch this and they'll be a little bit like, is this actually my guide? Has Dave adjusted it and changed it in a different way that I don't see fit? I, had a, I seriously doubt that Tommy would reach this stage of the video. We are currently 15 minutes in. I think Tommy would have turned off after 30 seconds. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> okay, the next national uh, focus... Sorry, the next... The next thing we spend our political power on is going to be prioritized guns. We get four military factories from this. We get an extra 5% factory output. It is a nice bonus. Boom. Four factories. Good. All right, so that's done. And we could add on support artillery. This is for logistics and this is for signal companies. As you can see, it's a bit of a back and forth, but more than likely, the Nationalists will win this. So the Republicans will win this. If it was a multiplayer game, it wouldn't go that way because the Nationalist player, well, I don't know. I've seen quite a few go where the the, uh, the Nationalists still lose anyway, but the Axis need Nationalist Spain because they build oil refineries inside of Spain and then Germany use them to trade oil and rubber as the war continues. Oh, and then Germany needs the tungsten inside of uh, Portugal too. Because Spain will declare war on Portugal. Alright, that's good. Alright, let me just refer to my notes here. Alright, at this point, we go for Air Doctrine. We are going to go for Operation Integrity because it is tactical bombers with fighters on the ground. And that is going to be our almost optimal build. Okay, there's two things I actually mentioned at the start of the game. And I, I have just realized I forgot to mention them. When I went over to Manchu, I started to research... Uh, Synthetic oil refineries. So this is a new build that Tommy's recently done, and I think this is freaking genius. So when you're on free trade, eighty percent of your resources go to the market. If you have an integrated puppet, you can extract all the resources out of the country at the cost of one civilian factory. So what you do is build oil and rubber refineries inside of Manchu, and then you take the resources from you. In that case, you get well. In that case, you get a hundred percent of their oil and rubber. But then you only have to spell it, spend a tiny cost of civilian factories when usually with 80% would have to go to the market. A Manchu in that case becomes the strongest ever. It's kind of like, I guess the metaphor would be like, uh, what's the, oh god, it's like far gras, you're pumping the goose full of uh, food and then you're going to feed off the Manchu. I guess you never actually finally, I guess at the end you never actually fully eat Manchu, but... You do slowly pick at it and take tiny chunks out of it. What is going on here? Why is that? Interesting that they've taken Madrid, though. Has that resulted in more factories? Six factories versus three. Ooh, maybe they will win this. Three factories? All right, maybe the Nationalists will win this, then. So we've sent all our guns. We're just sending them a few support equipment. So that's good. All right, at this point, I must admit, I probably should be start training our divisions. Okay, so this is something I'm going to go against Tommy's uh, decision here. So Tommy would train divisions, but because he has a very small army at this point, because we've disbanded most of it, it we cannot, we're only limited to 100,000 manpower we can train at one certain point. So in this case, we only train six of these, but we need 24 of them. So in this circumstance, we're going to train 24 of these. Another 10. I think that's everything we need, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and then we'll train these up, release them, and convert them. 
Because it just seemed like every game I've watched Tommy play, he releases the divisions early anyway, and then he trains them anyway. So, remember, the only downside of doing it this method is you lose equipment from exercising because they will be all green divisions. But at the end of the day, if you're going to exercise them and release them early, what's the point of using it with this method then? It doesn't seem... I don't know, it doesn't seem to be very optimal. And this way you can create an army overnight at lightning speed, which is always nice. Here you go. Ten divisions, convert them into force, and then naval invade here. We'll talk about that in a second. Like, huh, why is Dave doing that? Why is he naval invading? Hmm. I will explain that as time goes on, boys. We will explain. Okay. Can I put computer in? We're going to go for radio. We're going to go for concentrated. Okay, everything is going perfectly. Anti common sense pack. Why not? National defense state. Nice. All right, so you guys have been converted. We're going to convert you guys over now. Now we can see if there's any issues with supply. And there are. Artillery is the big issue. But we've got lots of guns, though. Let's have a look. So the war's going to be kicking off in about mm, three or four months. We've got 120 days, so that's perfect. Actually, no, it's going to be a little bit longer than that, isn't it? 70 days, 70... Oh, no, it's way more than three months. It's going to be more over six months. It's going to be like late 1937. I'm going to wait for these divisions to build a little bit strength before I start exercising them. Another 24 stack of infantry we are going to train. And we are going to use this template. We can expand on this template to make it maybe 20 width, for instance. But the width there it is right now is, is doable. Okay, is there anything I've missed? Let me have a look at my notes. No, I think we're doing pretty good right now. Right, so we're working on those refineries. That's good. Then we're going to start working on those. And then we are going to start the little trick that I talked about earlier where we are going to build refineries inside of Manchu. Perfect. Yep, the timings are on perfectly right now. I'm really happy how this is going. And the next one we're going to go for is the silent workhorse. It is a little bit later than Tommy usually goes for it. I think Tommy usually goes for the silent workhorse and then he switches out to the uh, the prioritized steel. I have noticed that every time I watch Tommy, he just plays a slightly different build. Remember, when you play the multiplayer meta, your build is going to be adapted based on what the other player is doing. So, evolve or die, guys. All right, silent workhorse, go. All right, let's make a few adjustments to our fleet right now. Move this boy over. So all I'm looking to do right now is just adjust the planes that we have got on this fleet. And what I'm going to do is delete all of them that aren't close air support. Yet again, this is not in Tommy's guide. This is my little adaptation. And I'll explain why oh, in a second. that in the right position yes all right 50 50 50 uh, yeah 50 50 so we are putting lots of cast based planes on our carriers as many as we do have i think there are a few uh spiritual mobilization is the next one because we we'll need to maintain a manpower got rid of all the cast there realize one of the carriers is a little bit smaller than the others there we go and there we go we've got all the carrier based casts on this aircraft and now we can get all of our planes because we want to use every single plane that we can prepared for when we're going to be invading china perfect once again i'll explain that as the time progresses on but for now uh We'll just save that one, okay? We'll save that little bit of information for later on. Alright, so spiritual mobilization is one you want to go for because that's the one we've been working towards for the, pretty much the entirety of the game. Improved machine tools is good early on. Okay, so then we're going to work towards the Marco Polo. So one, two, three. 
We deploy those divisions here. And put them here. We select our best general. I think the best general we go for is actually this guy. I've actually got that the guy's the wrong way around. Uh, go here. Exercise. Exercise. For the time being, we'll just assign you. Low supply. Is a bit of a concern, but we are working on that because we are going to be building up our uh, infrastructure in these areas. I think for the time being, we might just put you guys here. Just to prevent losing any equipment, because right now artillery hasn't catched up yet. Oh, actually, it's pretty close. Never mind. Too bad. Good. Okay, so let's talk about the carriers for a second. So what I've done is I've assigned all the carrier-based casts here. So what we're going to do is position our carriers here and use casts to bomb this area as much as we can. Carriers seem to be the most... Uh, casts seem to be the most effective because they're the ones that can actually move the combat back and forth on the front line. Where fighters, on the other hand, are only br reducing breakthrough or defense, which has a smaller effect compared to what the damage that casts can potentially do. So that's the reason why I put casts on the carriers. But late in the game, we are going to fill our carriers with zeros, which are just fighters. So in that case, if we get if we lose all these casts, that's okay. That's not a big deal because we're not going to use them later on. Anywho, um, good. Get two hundred air wing here. Let you into hundreds too. And a hundred C. Is that all good? Yes. Perfect. Don't forget you can also get some more steel from Manchu as the game progresses. Because remember you are going to be building an infrastructure up in this zone. Trying to exercise these boys as much as we can. Because we want them to be level 3 when the war kicks off. The horses on the other hand, it doesn't matter. We're just going to use those for suppression. Actually, now think about it. Tommy did actually say to me that he doesn't use horses. He told me that horses are a waste because they they use too much equipment. So there you go. I'm going to take Tommy's advice on that one. I'm going to convert all those 10, 10 horses into infantry. I think it has been tested at a meta level where they try and use horses on the front line instead of infantry. But the problem is, is they use too much equipment. Horses use extra, 40 or 50% extra equipment. Alright, just for the purpose to represent a multiplayer game, this civil war is going exactly how I thought it would go. In this case, we need to... Uh... These are all the 40 divisions. Move these here. Delete these divisions. So, just to explain what I'm doing right now, if anyone doesn't really get it, I'm trying to make the Republic uh, the Nationalists win, just to represent a multiplayer game. I don't want wacky things to happen in this multiplayer game to throw off the balance of the game, so I want everything to be consistent, just to represent a multiplayer game as it would play in a multiplayer scenario. Does that make sense? Does anyone not understand that? Good. Anyway, go back to uh, Japan. And I'll T debug. There we go. More than likely, that might still not make a massive impact, but regardless, I've done what I needed to do. Okay, great. So now we've gone for radio. Now we can go for signal companies, which we need to research as soon as possible. So there you go. The 100 convoys have finished. So in this case, so this is an area that's up for debate. Is it a better idea to make another four carriers to put into another fleet, maybe to have as a reserve? Or is it better off to make submarines to try and damage enemy convoys around the Pacific? Oh man, this is probably going to create a hot debate in the topic in the comment section. I know it is. So this is the deal. You are going to be sinking enemy ships with kamikaze. Kamikaze is the weapon that you're going to use to destroy enemy ships of any kind. So carriers, for the most part, are just stationary fighter airports, I guess. Um, so you don't need navs on them to bomb enemy ships. They're just there for the purpose of hitting enemy uh, or the fighters and holding air superiority. But the question is, more carriers isn't really going to help me that much. So in that case, convoys would be useful because I'm going to be hitting other convoys around the map. So in this case, I'm going to go with a convoy strategy anyway. So we're going to add those onto Fleet 2. Is it Fleet 2? No, it's Fleet 1. There we go. That may be just at some point, um, depending on how things go, but... For now, that'll be what I'm going to do. Yes. 
All right, everyone's getting exercised. That's perfect. Collect all of these dudes. Give them my field marshal. Keep an eye on my guns. To train some more infantry when the war does kick off, so we've got some more troops to fill out the front line. Alright, perfect. Does that make a difference to the Civil War? Not, more than likely not. Most of the divisions I couldn't delete anyway because they were all, like, divisions that spawn at the start of the war anyway. Yep, yeah, so the purpose of this, I'm just going to hop into Spain. Uh, actually, what is this space? D01, isn't it? Yeah, it is. We are just going to annex you. Is SPR. There we go. And jump back into... Hey, the Spanish Civil War's over! The Nationalists won! How was that possible? How did that happen? It looked like they were going to lose! Wow! <laughs> There's also a bug at the moment that lend leases continue after when the Civil War's already ended. I'm really surprised in multiplayer that they've not chose to exploit that. Like, make a really buff Spain somehow by, like, feeding them tanks after when the war's ended. I'm really surprised no one's actually attempted to do that. Hmm, thinking face. Okay, so another little cheeky strat that works really effectively, that's something that Tommy doesn't do, but I have recommended he does, even though he ignores me. I love you, Tommy, but why, why don't you reply to my calls? Um, yeah, so this is another strat, and I'm going to show you what it is. It requires you to disable all notifications. There will be a few more you have to disable when you're at war, but for now, those are the ones you disable this second, anyway. Gonna go for logistics too, because supply issues inside of Japan are a nightmare. We are right on time. Okay, at this point, I think Tommy goes for logistics. I am gonna go for that, but I am gonna go for the theorist to begin with, just so we can get down the doctrine tree a lot quicker. Um, then he goes for logistics to reduce attrition. There are a lot of bonuses that you can stack to get more damage against China. Um, but I'm choosing not to do them. We'll talk more about that as the game progresses anyway. You guys are almost trained. That's perfect. Supply problems? The supply keeps changing here. You're probably thinking, hang on a second, what's changing the supply? How come it's in supply and it's not out of supply, in supply, not out of supply? The reason why that is, is because of the weather. Where's the weather? There we go. So you can say very hot and extremely hot, which is here, causes 50% extra supply consumption, which is a nightmare. Just don't forget this guy too to go for organization first. Get into battle as quickly as possible will aid you in the long run by a mile. Also, this guy, which is going to be holding the front line, um, having guerrilla fire is really useful too because it means he entrenches quicker. Uh, also, the greater cost prosperity sphere is what you want to do because you're working towards the Marco Polo incident. All right, you guys are trained and up to date. So now I'm going to put you guys here and put you back onto this front line here. You guys are trained and now we're going to organize and get ready for war. Supply is a bit crappy for now, but we will work on that and make it a lot better as time progresses. We're not losing that much equipment anyway, and we're not doing too bad on guns, so it's all good for now. Slightly adjust the weapons on the front line. That looks good. Okay. Um, let me out. We're working on these. That's fine. Let me have a look at my notes. Yeah, artillery is the next one. I want to get that extra 10% soft attack boost. Which is really useful. Oops, I'm exercising, dude. There you go, the gun problems almost fix itself. Perfect. For you guys early, the 12 divisions. But now we'll just stick those in reserve at the back because we're not going to use them immediately. Okay, so initially the part of the war, you are going to be fighting the Chinese Navy. So we're going to put these guys on patrol and try and intercept their Navy as soon as we can. Um, 
this is another part of the the guide where it kind of like moves away from Tommy's guide and moves on to my own slight adjustments to try and make it the most optimal and kind of dumbs it down a little bit to try and make your effectiveness first China to be the most optimal. But I realize we've run over on this video, so I'm going to end it here. Don't forget, guys, if you enjoy min-maxing videos, uh, a vote would be a like on this video. A vote would be a comment on this video. And, of course, don't forget to subscribe and ring a ring, ding, 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 that bell. Apart from that, have a good day. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.